Hi guys, it's Alstein with Arish Kumar, the founder of uh, Crawl IQ. Uh, sorry for the short notice. I immediately wanted to check out this uh, product since there was a couple of discussion in our community. I asked Arish and he was glad, happy to do a demo in quick session. So I wanted to go live. Maybe it will be useful for you guys to check out and learn about this product. So I welcome you guys again and welcome Arish uh, to the community. Thank you, Austin. It's a pleasure to speak to you and your community. I have been following you guys for quite, uh, quite some time, and I really love the way you come up with new ideas, new topics, new tools. And it's an awesome SaaS community that you guys are running. So congratulations to you as well on that. And Thank you so much. It's so value-adding, and the uh, idea of the community and uh, you know working together with community always exciting for me as well. To, uh, to be honest, uh, we I try to find some good softwares. I have been following Crawl IQ, and I didn't. To be honest, I didn't uh, buy the uh, Crawl IQ on the first time because it was a bit odd for me to understand the concepts and everything. But I have been part of your community and following your updates. I see that you consistently post uh, tips on copywriting, how you can use Crawl IQ for different purposes. And you also introduce AI component, if I believe, into the product with market research. So this got me excited. And when I saw the discussions, I directly wanted to get your initial official uh, information. So just that what we are going to do right now. Uh, if you guys can hear me, just let me know in the chat so I can know everything is fine. No audio issues there. Just drop by sound is okay. And now I will let uh, uh, Arish to explain first how do you define crawl IQ? Because we see a lot of definitions everywhere. It's like market research software or AI content uh, writing software. And I also see like research software. Uh, if you have to define your product, how would you define it? Yes, thank you, Austin. CrawlQ uh, is a new mechanism. And when I say new mechanism, it's new in the sense that it comes with AI powered buyer persona research. So the system where you have buyer persona, your market research, and you combine this market research with the content creation. So mm -hmm. when I say market research and content creation, in simple words, when you talk about everyone about content, first thing everyone talk is SEO, keywords, topics, search volume. But in ProQ, when we start, we are talking about this person this niche, this person mm -hmm. is someone who you, Alston, can take as a coffee date. So this person, you know so well that you have a coffee date with this person. And this is very first step in the crawl queue. So you're not thinking about keyword. You're not thinking about search volume. You're not thinking about topics. You are thinking about one person that you know, and you can take this person on a coffee date. This person is niche. And this is the starting point of the crawl queue to understand this person well mm. and try to abstract and generalize this person in a statistically significant number so mm. that your market is born. So in this case, ProlQ is not only a content creation tool, but ProlQ is also a target audience validation, business mm. idea generation. It's a, it's a much more than content creation. You, you understand your target audience, you go deep with the target audience, and in this case, your niche, the person you want to take on a coffee date, and you generalize this using AI insights. And uh, the insights, and the way insights are created, the way you are generalizing is based on copywriting formulas. So it's proven, tested copywriting formulas. It's not that I am inventing these formulas, but we have collected the formulas and bring it together. Mm -hmm. And those insights help you to deep dive into your target audience. It's the kind of secret code to uh, your target audience brain where you're mm -hmm. trying to understand what kind of roadblocks, dreams, desires, suspicions, and sort of results and expectation they wanted to achieve. So mm -hmm. in my case, my target audience is Fred. Fred has fears. Fred expects results. Fred has desires. And uh, Fred is one person and who I know this person. This person uh, I generalize into SaaS founders, CMOs, sales mm -hmm. and technology leaders, 
product design engineers and ProLQ is especially designed for this spread. And this spread mm -hmm. is not only responsible for product launches, for business idea generation, but it's also responsible for creating content, for uh, launching the website, for launching the new product. So the way ProLQ combine these two disciplines together, the product idea validation, service idea validation, new idea generation, and then combining this with the content creation. Okay, so if we have to define who is the right target audience or who is the right customers for your product and who is this product is not for, how would you say that? Yes, this product is specially designed for product design engineers, um, product owners, SaaS mm -hmm. uh, CMOs, CTOs, sales and marketing technology leaders. And this product is not for the general content writing purposes. So when you are just a freelancer content writer or you are writing hobby content, when you're writing Wikipedia type of content, when you're writing just SEO focused content only, not niche, niche specific content. Mm -hmm. I think that this product uh, might not be too appealing because it needs a starting point. It needs some serious investment. And once you set up the laboratory environment, right? Once mm -hmm. you set up your target audience test, you can perform many, many A-B tests and you can automate your entire setup. But if you're really targeting on the keyword based high level articles, for example, uh, dog training, weight loss programs, then there is already so many tools out there which can do a wonderful job. But mm -hmm. here with ProLQ, we want to go super specific, deep into your niche, try to understand the emotions, pain points, dreams, desires. And the main idea is for the, the using Schwartz, the right from where we uh, sort of borrow this idea is you are trying to exploit the mass desire about your product or service that already exists. You're not creating a desire. I mean, you generally don't create a desire for a product service. You exploit the desire. And when mm -hmm. I say you exploit the desire, that means you are exploiting it through the market research in ProLQ in terms of understanding the pain points, emotions, dreams, desires, results, and you expand on it. And it's both, mm -hmm. it really goes into too deep into that uh, process and you can iterate over it. So there is nothing failure in ProLQ or there's nothing mistake. You start with one idea, you take AI insights, you refine this idea and you continuously dwell on it to make it more better and better. Okay. And uh, you test your uh, audiences, your funnels, your conversions, and basically it's a more gears towards conversion uh, optimization if you understand the language of marketing because Marketing, marketing people will understand SEO part, they see separately, convergence, uh, see, they see separately. Mm. What I'm trying to say here is uh, if you don't fix your uh, target audience, product market fit, then you're carrying a leaky bucket. So whatever investment you do for SEO is not going to help you True. if you are not fixing this fundamental uh, idea about who you are targeting. That makes sense because intent, uh, we need to find the intent, then we should go about the research. Otherwise, it not be. Uh, still, if people are not uh, uh, unable to understand it because we are using technical terms right now from marketing's perspective, a beginner might not understand it. So you can probably share your screen now and showcase the product on what is the best way to go uh, forward and use this? And what are the unique uh, points in your software which really are, separates your product from others and also showcase uh, different research modules and uh, AI content writer, uh, uh, how can use it and how is it different with other tools? I will be uh, interrupting you if there's any other main questions from me or from the chat. I'll interrupt you and I'll ask you. You can probably share the screen right now. Sure, sure. So I hope my screen is visible. Yes, give me a second. Yeah, we can see it. So uh, there are several resources to start with, and uh, I'll try to not cover them all, but I'll try to direct here because it's quite a useful place to see the unique value proposition of ProLQ. So when you say uh, what kind of different uh, sort of uh, unique value ProLQ has, you can start here. You can also understand uh, and dig deeper into the market research component. So it's available on prolq.ai under resources. Mm -hmm. Then, as I mentioned to you, 
role queue is powered by a fundamental uh, copywriting formula. So when I say copywriting formula, it is our basis, it's our main research uh, in stitching all the AI and insights, answers, and stories together mm -hmm. in a way which make it more meaningful for the content creation. Mm -hmm. So it's not just asking AI to turn some words into answers or stories, but really collecting this information in a way which fits to the copywriting approach. And the copywriting approach here is uh, drawn from authoritative sources like Eugene Schwartz or mm -hmm. David Ogilvy. These are the popular copywriters with their copywriting formula. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll try, just interrupt me anywhere, but I'll try to just give a uh, like short walkthrough and then also in between try to jump to the tool. Yeah. Got it. So uh, obviously I uh, mentioned to you that the main idea, the big idea behind Crawl2 is how to know your target audiences like your mom and pop without never talking in the language they fail to understand. Mm -hmm. Very powerful idea and why I wanted to emphasize it that the tool is really focused in a sense uh, as if you are talking to your mom and pop and sometimes actually you know more than they know themselves, right? Because you're working together with them, you're talking together with them. And then you're also speaking in a language which you can connect with them and they will never like fail to understand you. So that's the uh, kind of deep idea with ProQ. This product is especially designed for product design engineers, uh, CTOs, SaaS CMOs, sales and marketing technology leaders who are struggling to uh, launch their first website, struggling to launch uh, uh, their product, uh, difficult to get more revenues, just because they have not learned a basic way to deep dive into their target audience. They are following a different approach, for example, completely different approach like a SEO approach. So uh, just to interrupt you. So for example, let's say I'm not a CMO, I'm not a marketing uh, on an agency level. Let's say I'm a... Uh, marketer who's planning to research on a different industry or a niche who uh, where i don't have any experience or idea i don't know what are the pain points i don't know what are the products to target i don't know what are the important things to i cover well this product will be helpful for them also or is it different as long as you are a um, learner and as long as you are in, into the idea that you can start with a rough idea of what your target audience even you don't know about their pain points, the information and the insights are designed in a way which will give you lead and steering. So if you don't know anything about your target audience, you still know that there is one person. This person is Alston. He lives in this place and he desires something like this. And you can, uh, I can take Alston on a coffee, right? That is more than enough to start with Crawl2. Got it. Right? Once you start with defining Alston more about what he wants, what he desires, little little steps, like very rough idea, then these AI insights give you powerful idea. And I will take this uh, maybe uh, on because this is a great point. I can directly jump into one of the one of the workspace. So when you create uh, a workspace with uh, Crawl Queue, this workspace are always connected with your domain. So for example. Here I'm working on a business idea, 3D printing, and this is connected with the domain. There is a difference between a business idea and the niche, right? So niche is the person that you are targeting. So let's be very clear on this, right? And the business idea is that you yourself as an agency or a marketer of that agency, you have a product or solution which can solve the pain point uh, potentially, right? Still, we, are, we have to discover. So potentially, uh, this is the right person that we are going on a coffee date and uh, we can solve the problem pain points. If you have that intention, you can still start with Crawl Queue and go further with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, we also have a lot of demo workspaces here. So these are all business ideas, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, content automation, customer experience, digital agencies, education tech, extended reality and, uh, sorry to interrupt uh, when we are uh, inserting url domain does it serve any purposes like does it take any data from the website also or at this stage no at this okay. stage uh, you are making sure that you are working on a workspace 
with a specific domain. You can also give, you can also give it an example dot com. Doesn't matter at this stage, right? So once you uh, start with the workspace, the first thing, obviously, I have not created new one, but I'll show you uh, how the market research looks like. When you start with market research, your first thing first is you are asked some questions, very initial questions like, "Who is your niche?" And uh, with one, so let me uh, start this one example. So you're familiar with 3D printing, right? 3D printing is like a talk. Uh, many people are doing like uh, now talking about it. Everyone want to make career sure. in 3D printing, right? So let's say that my business is potentially about 3D printing, and I'm looking for a target audience research. Very rough idea. Mm -hmm. So the first point I gave to TollQ is, hey, I'm looking for someone who has interest in craft and uh, art, and this person is a student. And this person is looking to make a new career to get started with 3D printing. Mm. Is this does make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's also something that I come across because I know some person. This person's name is Chris Pirillo. I know this person. He was doing second masters, and he enrolled himself into uh, craft and design. So the first thought which came to me as a 3D print uh, 3D printing business owner is that hey, I have someone I know this person. His name is Chris. I will ask him on a coffee date and I will start some discussion with him. So that's where the conversation points are coming. So I started mm -hmm. with one simple idea and I narrowed it down. So I said, hey, Chris is not only a craft and design student, but he's also professional because he was working. He's this is the second time he's doing his masters and he has a desire to scale. His business and he is very creative person. He is a trend spotter, and uh, he in, he is interested in this additive manufacturing trends, right? That's how I know Chris. And uh, if someone know Alston, it is easy to make that statement about Alston, right? Right, right. So this is not a like very difficult starting point. It's just a rough idea, not thinking about keyword, topic, search volume, but think about a person that you know in your network. And you start making some simple statement about this person, and of mm -hmm. course, of course, this uh, person has some connection with the product that I'm selling. I'm not going on a random coffee date. I'm going with someone who I think might be a potential person. He's also in my network, and somehow I can solve their pain points and problem. Mm -hmm. but the idea was go more and more deeper. So with this two input, I can save it here. Save button. I don't need to go further, and I can generate here of some insights. So when I press insights, it will take these two inputs and it will expand on this. So it will give me further idea what can be the micro niche, for example. So when I was using this, I got more in depth information. So this kind of niche is a person who is looking to buy 3D printing models, design plans, and interested in additive and subtractive manufacturing, rapid prototyping. This deep insight came while I just started these two ideas. And then I still try to relate this with this Chris, that person that I know. In this case, anyone talking to you, they will still try to relate some of this insight with Alston. Hey, uh, I know also, maybe this is what Alston is looking at. Maybe he will, uh, they will talk to you, right? So this is all pragmatic, practical step, rather than going into all keywords to, it's like really fundamental drawing Boardroom, like you're going into a drawing board and you're really talking to the person that you think is a good starting point. And okay. then, so, uh, and also, uh, how does it generate this? Is it taking only the text which you provided? Let's say I provide some irrelevant uh, section in within my answer. Does it take based on that, or does it uh, look into market or any other sources to come up with this uh, output? No, this this uh, information. Uh, as I said, is powered by the copywriting framework. So okay. behind behind it, it try to really uh, have some examples. So it, uh, the AI knows how to uh, you know generate this example or text. For example, it understands a definition of niche. So niche is a specific group of people in a specific situation with a specific problem and a specific desire. This mm -hmm. is statement, these examples that are here in the help section. Uh, understand and give instruction to AI 
to come up with a very relevant example. It's not going to get into random. That's what the beauty of the call queue because it has behind in it a mechanism, a formula, which talk to the language model and also take user's input. User's mm -hmm. input uh, behind the call to copywriting formula, talk to language model and present precise insights, uh, very well formulated insights. And these insights are in the nature of not random, but mm -hmm. in the way it is defined. So it's, it's you can see the starting point. It's talk, this insight AI is already talking about this kind of niche. So it's a starting with this statement, right? This kind of niche is a person who is looking to buy 3D printing model, design plans, interested in additive and subtractive manufacturing, rapid prototyping. They are looking for parts which are high quality, are, are looking to find an inventor for prototypes or just want to buy 3D printing models. So it is going super specific. And uh, uh, it also gives me a story about uh, the Chris, which I know, and then I could refine this story more better. So I get some points here and then I I go into much more detail. So see, I'll show you how super specific then this story uh, became about Chris. Chris Pirillo is a craft and design engineering student in his final years of studies. This is his second master. He's a creator, nerd, blogger, geek, dad. He has two kids also. He loves Star Wars, Lego, Seattle Retro, and he has a keen interest in getting started with 3D printing and has his own, he wants to have his own desire or his uh, want is to have his own manufacturing unit. He is exploring the best profit profitable 3D printing design and models. And now you can see here in the text below, it always try to adhere to this formula. What is their problem? What is their specific situation? What they want, what they desire. So these instructions along with the copywriting approach always give you very specific insights which are ready to put as a micro content because once you start working this you save this information you generate insight you refine it then you go to next step but next step become more and more easy because you just need to say hey this is my website domain name this is my company name fill with ai boom it will uh, then populate everything by itself and it will come up not only just random input but really the input which it will justify with uh, with these insights so once you do fill with ai save you again go to generate insight when you generate insight you will see that whatever information that is picked up here it adds a justification for it and you might get a new idea again to change this information because maybe this is not relevant so again it goes into more deeper again you provide it like one or two best idea like what is the best software 3d print what is the best software for 3d printing you say fill with AI, you save it, you generate insight, and you get more and more refined ideas. So what are the other long tail words that you should be targeting? Uh, it goes deeper into defining your uh, headline for the niche. So if I am a 3D printing business and I am targeting 22 year old art and science, uh, so art and craft student or this type of person who is Chris, uh, who is doing his second masters, then my headline will be students, design professional, craftsmen, engineers, trend spotters, and buyers. Get started with 3D printing, manufacturing, discover devices, software, and strategies for rapid prototyping that create realist, realistic image with 3D material. Okay, so you see how deep. So these design... headlines were generated by the AI model, not by yes. uh, written by you. No, this okay. is generated by AI model. And once you generate here, you get more uh, headline ideas. For example, this is the headline idea. I uh, improved this once it was first time generated. Second, again, it gives me again more ideas which I can improve. But anytime I need to just put first two input, fill with AI, save, generate insight, and refine this. Because finally, these input that you see in the middle column, that goes into the content creation. That are mm. smartly stitched and used for more improvement in, in the AI. Mm. So behind we have our own AI, which we call Athena. Uh, once you start this, saving this, these are the four most important categories for Athena to start working. Mm. Because after this, you can sort of you know, push up and power up Athena. I'll show you 
uh, in a moment. But this is quite deep. So this psychographics is very deep. It says what is the emotional payoff of your target audience. So this person is sporting a new trend with 3D printing to create a million dollar business. So it's the emotional payoff of my target audience. What is a single big desire? You want to be a successful 3D craft and design entrepreneur. Um, so in this screen also, you just provided the first uh, title, yeah. then everything was generated by AI. Exactly, these two mm -hmm. titles. And now you you can imagine that I'm already into this topic, right? So previous, these two uh, insights already gave me some thoughts, some idea, what to put here. So in a sense, I'm leading it all the time as a, as a human. I'm leading the AI, and I'm steering it in the right direction. But whatever it comes, whatever it is giving me back, is no, it's like very bold because uh, I would not have thought myself about it. And I just, I'm just leading on it. I'm providing some leads, steering, and it giving me, giving me more refined statement. And in the end, copywriting and marketing is more like education and, and uh, collecting these insights putting these insights in a specific order where you can persuade your target audience, right? Sure. Your content need not to be a ebook or a 2,500 of words, but very sharp uh, value adding statement insights, which can help you to create uh, LinkedIn posts. But you're already, when you are doing this market research, I, what I did was I was already start posting this as my LinkedIn post, my Twitter post, because this is already giving me enough micro content. So the time that I will invest in creating market research will all, always pay me off because I'm already creating micro content and now micro content are getting more popular. True. And when we click on uh, regenerate, it will regenerate the sidebar stuff. Yes. So when you when you save it, you generate, you get insights. But if, if you're not happy with that, you can regenerate it. Obviously, you need to clear this up and you can regenerate it. Got it. Um, what I actually didn't uh, cover in this is this is not always a starting point when uh, when you are really new to something which is completely you know uh, suppose you have no idea about what is 3D printing because we assumed right in the beginning that uh, and this was also your question that what will happen if I am completely new and uh, uh, that I don't know the pain point I don't know who is my target audience. But at any point of time, when you open this screen, you will have one topic at least in your mind that this is my topic, right? And even though you are asked and challenged to come up with some name of the person, you can leave something there like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And you can come to this screen later on. And then I will start something like this, 3D printing. Because I'm in the situation now that I don't know exactly what it is. I just heard from Alston, he was saying 3D printing, and I'll, I will start looking at it. So the first thing first, I can start into search intent discovery. I can look uh, what are the trending topics that people are asking. But maybe I picked up the wrong one. Uh, let me go first here. So that was my starting point. Printing is something that uh, uh, you heard uh, someone saying, um, and you don't know exactly what it is. And of course, you were challenged in the beginning to answer some question, but it's okay. You can say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And you can come to this screen, and you can first thing you can do is start unlock insights. So these are again AI driven insights. The whole idea of the crawl queue is it's really forcing you to think in terms of target audience not in terms of keywords. Uh, and the first thing you can see here, what idea would my target audience have about 3D printing? Any topic you start, restaurant, uh, robotics, or uh, dog training, or uh, weight loss protein, whatever you start, it will always guide you towards what idea would my target audience would have about this topic. And then it will lead you through this. So. Uh, you can imagine already there's there are some questions. What action is my target audience taking and uh, are not taking about their desires, uh, problems, pain points about 3D printing? Things they are not uh, doing now and they will do in the future. Uh, it goes further into this question. What are their topmost desires? What are their topmost worries, concerns, roadblock? So 
what what mistakes would my target audience will incur about 3d printing the 3d printing will eat away their job or even worse the word uh, word interesting question i would just ask so you know it it is giving you already a, a framework to think in terms of your target audience and it is giving you some questions now you can ask me hey what will i do with this question i still don't know what to do so then you go here into deeper uh, which is a search framework so here again we are saying hey 3d printing faqs 3d printing suspicion 3d printing benefit 3d printing dreams questions desires so this whole section even though it is taking you on the search but it is designed to create a framework for you so you start thinking in terms of your target audience about that topic and not in terms of keywords at this stage because you you wanted to be super specific you wanted to understand their pain point and that's the question you asked me in the beginning what if if i don't know what are their roadblocks pain points then you come here and you sort of start with the framework you can go as deep as possible so you can go into social media search like uh, facebook pinterest linkedin youtube channels uh, even you can go to uh, hashtags this uh, and then you can research what kind of different hashtags are there video searches podcast you can uh, you can go to podcast with listen not a big search engine of podcast you will find a lot of podcast people are doing about okay, so so if i understand correctly this section is for the users who don't have any idea on the uh, topic uh, yeah. in order to answer the first questions uh, or the first initial inputs on the first uh, section of the tool you showed us we can yeah. use this tool to do manual research and bring those inputs into that section of the tool exactly exactly the idea is uh, always to find uh, that person who you want who you can speak on a coffee date and uh, this is the real person this person is living breathing he has dreams desires roadblocks suspicions and in order to understand this person you can take the help got it and and you can go as deep as possible here got now it. you can also tell me um, hey uh, this is not only uh, enough because i don't have time to do research but it's not it depends on your topic in your business uh, what exactly you're looking for are you really looking for a specific business idea then of course you need to do some more research but as quickly as possible you can come to a conclusion that hey i found something which i can talk to alston on the coffee date and these are my three most important talking points i am happy to hit the call queue and put the first sentence and then use uh, letter insights to improve that Got this it. is as simple as but you might also ask me hey uh, i also want to make sure that uh, there is enough volume people are searching it and that's where i showed you the another one where you can go and search what look here what people are searching about 3d printing okay printing. because in my opinion 3d printing is very very broad subject 3d printing is applied in many many industries so i don't think this is the right approach uh, uh, if you want to be really specific you want to really go and search uh, what is happening who is looking for house like 3d printing house 3d printing file 3d printing pen 3d printing ideas 3d printing stove 3d printing a house i will go super specific and then i will find my idea business idea and look for that person who can i can go on a coffee date because i can write a wikipedia article about 3d printing but that won't help uh, to help me into business and improve the conversion so the content and everything is designed and the tool is designed in a way which can help you to improve the conversion and directly apply to the business and not create a high level sort of uh, knowledge only content of course you can create knowledge only but you want to be super specific here to get maximum value out of the tool here you can see what people uh, what different people are asking questions like can 3d printing make money can 3d printing be profitable can 3d printing be used in education sector so you see like how people are searching these ideas and you can go as deep as uh, possible uh, with exploring different types of topic here you see uh, also you can compare between 3d printing and something which is alternative lego versus 3d printing sculpting versus 3d printing blender and 3d printing 
you can also search with some modifiers um, you can understand um, the, the sort of the, your funnel so when you are creating content only for the topo funnel then i will pick up something topics like this how does 3 3d printing work meaning of 3d printing how do i use 3d printing if i am creating a content for top of the funnel then my target audience will be someone different and then i will make a new workspace i will find an outstand who is only interested in the major broad idea of 3d printing but if i have a transaction intent like cheapest 3d printing software uh, top 3 3d printing uh, filament bulb to use then my target audience research will be completely different then i will try to find an outstand who is really uh, having an education in this area and he's looking to make his uh, manufacturing plant somewhere and i'm really talking to that person with that deep business idea so you see how this search intent and your uh, goal of the content will change also your target audience and everything right so once you are uh, there you uh, i said in the beginning once you do the five main uh, categories uh, you are ready to power up athena athena is uh, sort of our internal ai and uh, when you say power up you can train it so any time you make some changes here or improve um, i would not say every time press the button uh, to athena because uh, so uh, we do we do not need to fill up all the other fields on the research component uh, the best practice with working and get maximum value is to fill the four first categories Correct. power up athena and then go to content automation and see if everything is going in the right direction because mm -hmm. you don't want to invest your time and effort if your initial direction is not right right because uh, you see uh, the idea is more you fill this section more better and specific it gets but i will show you um, you won't have testimonial already you won't have core concept defined already you won't have your case studies uh you won't have your offers and call to action already when you are starting with a new idea right so it really depends in where you are in your business if you are already validated your marketing funnel if you are deep into this you can start putting your testimonials team faqs case studies and this will help you to create super specific uh, sales letter emails uh, blog post right so more deeper you go the more content get specific specific but in the beginning as you are starting it's okay to work with these four categories niche demographics semantics psychographics and then you come here and power up your athena when you power up your athena you can also like press this button or here you can add a url now this become interesting because if you know there is already some blog article which is high value and you know this is trending well then what you are going to do you put that blog article and you say power up athena so it it will crawl that url mm -hmm. now what we are doing in the back is we are taking those uh, ideas turning them into insights and not and then uh, it, it is same here so you you sort of take the existing content uh, which is authority content which is well established content and you turn it into insights so you can can search back you will never find the same thing again because the content was just used for the steering purposes and okay. once you steer it it collects insight and again fit into those same insights so it has a ready made insight set and you can again come back here anytime and test whether it is going in the right direction so for example i crawled one page which was uh, related to 3d printing i can now ask some basic question so this scroll queue search can help you again to see if you are in the right direction so for example i can say main benefits of 3d printing so if i understand this part correctly this is a search engine for this particular project based on the inputs you gave and you can use this uh, search engines to understand whether what you are doing is correct or going on the right it direction it does not it, take information from external it's just focusing on this project indeed it is okay. the internal semantic search engine same like a google search engine which understand what you are trying to ask it so mm -hmm. you see main benefit of 3d printing the first thing freedom make designs 3d printing prototype 
-hmm. now i can really give you the insight because now this will be used to improve our prompt or talking to the language model because whenever such thing will come in the blog give me three main benefits of 3d printing it will start picking up these ideas so it's sort of learning in the copywriting behavior like it might not be there uh, i mean you can ask me question why freedom is here but because we have created our insights and we uh, save them in a way which is more oriented towards sales and copywriting that's why this word came first as a freedom True. and make designs then it goes second third so this understand the meaning behind this word and in the context of copywriting and marketing framework so this is sort of i don't know if they're getting complex but um so the data comes from the insights you provided and your ai model and also the urls which you gave for the inspirations uh, can we give multiple urls like like five or something like that or just one for each uh, project limits so uh, five five urls for first years then it goes up higher okay. uh, here you want to be uh, like uh, exercising this option with caution why because you don't want to uh, put like 10 urls and then press the button because then we will sort of confuse athena Uh, we don't want to have garbage in garbage out so that is very cautiously designed so that user don't put unnecessary or because then everything will get mixed up and uh, okay. we won't get the quality results so it's very important to exercise this caution that we only power up athena when it is needed we don't do unnecessary push ups otherwise we will have pain uh, and this this is the right testing environment then what you can do uh, once you have this you can directly jump into the content creation process so i'll i'll take one example so so far we only talked about uh, market research uh, idea validation idea origination but here comes the real power where all this information is then sort of stitched together with your content creation i have already one blog here which i'll pick up directly but again you will put some th- initial input there like uh, your blog topic what is uh, idea about it and why we are asking this information again to really make sure that we don't confuse athena because athena then will pick up this main main topic and then start collecting this all information from here into the content process so see i made some like initial uh, two three inputs and then it gave me outline so in this outline it says me start with the introduction what 3d printing business opportunities are and there is there a future actually i forgot to show you there was one question it says what questions would my target audience will ask about 3d printing and then there was an answer suggested by ai that your target audience are asking about the future what is the future of 3d printing this more popular question that your target audience will ask always that what is the future of 3d printing and that's where it was picked up so what 3d printing business opportunities are and is there a future so you see uh, the insights all those things that we have are finally coming together here uh, regions for 3d printing in short the benefits you can see so you are going to describe them here the disadvantages of 3d printing limitations to short shortcomings and conclusions and then your body should have something like this so what you can do just start with this rough idea forget about this whatever it came because this blog was dug up for the so first thing first you will see this headline uh, and the outline suggested outline now you can develop this outline further you can even define your topic here change the country then it is fetching all the results from your competitors you can first thing you can start is generating headline intros so it will give you a headline and another intro section hmm. and you can see that uh, there are different resources i'll walk through them so 3d printing craft design you you can now start with this and uh, this uh, uh, this introduction generated by also by uh, the ai now whenever we are generating this it always connecting with your initial market research so you can see 
additive manufacturing is the process of making three dimensional solid objects from a digital file it is also known as 3d printing rapid prototyping and desktop manufacturing you if you recollect we had a word yep. right yep. rapid prototyping so and who invented this now i can take this put here uh, and uh, start my blog uh, content and at this stage we are just researching our content we are going to again stitch them together or put them but we can go as uh, so the as, co concept is it's not just generating content directly but whatever the insights you gave whatever the specific question you wanted to address or whatever the main keywords you decided to give it tries to insert that keyword or phrases also into the content and generate the output yeah but not uh, not just blindly insert but it's in a meaningful way in a semantic okay. way in understanding of the context because it understands in which context we are asking got it so got it. it gives you different headlines content you can go with your competitive content for example uh, here you will see there's a con content here what is 3d printing from 3d printing.com here again you will see another paragraph 3d printing industry now what we are going to do we are going to turn this paragraph into question so ai will turn into question and now so, uh, currently it's showing the exact uh, intro paragraph of the competitors using but you are trying to uh, generate questions uh, which are unique out of the paragraph yes yes okay. which are unique out of the paragraph and here you can uh, rewrite this paragraph you wanted to copy this paragraph but we we are not saying that you have to use uh, your competitor content what we are saying is we are turning your competitor content into intelligent questions and it's always possible to modify this question as per your context so it's not necessary that you take this question as it is but what you do is you are also generating answer now but this answer is not through this paragraph this answer is through your own insights uh, your own research cool. we just use this uh, sort of uh, competitor content and turn it into something which is very relevant for us without yeah. even need to read this content so what was uh, 3d printing only what, where was the 3d printing only suitable for prototyping and one of manufacturing in the early stages it gave me answer sometimes questions are open ended you can make this can we, uh, can we regenerate the answers also like uh, different answer or is it just one answer i think there are many questions you can regenerate you can retype this again regenerate this answer right okay let's say for example for the where was the 3d printing only suitable question i didn't like the answer can i see whether there is any other variation for the answer yes you press again another button to it okay got it that's what i was asking right and will give you probably different answer yeah Got every it, time it. you are putting then obviously you are burning some credit but that's sure, okay sure. <laughs> um so it's it's very difficult to control uh, that in one type you might get very desired answer maybe second try it will give you a different answer this kind of randomness right uh, it's very difficult but you see all the competitor contents are there you can explore this content and if i am into very specific industry that like uh let's say i wanted to go aerospace automotive and also can you show one rewrite example on that button also you mean here yeah yeah, yeah. sure so essentially is there any maximum uh, character out uh, limitation or whatever the paragraph which is showing on the screen will be rewritten this paragraph that you see on the screen will be rewritten in trying to find similar synonyms and not mm -hmm. changing the semantic uh, sort of value or meaning of the paragraph but just spinning it and this okay. strange version you can again use for question generation because once you turn it around maybe it will give you some different question right it yes, can be yes. possible so the so when you so rewrite option is there any uh, ai uh, the athena is also involved or it's just spin tax i think uh, at this stage it's only um, the spinning the text not really okay. athena is involved but we are exploring like what is the best way to inject the insights also while it spin so we are yeah. almost like in our research space uh, we have couple of uh, ideas that is is at this stage 
I wanted to manage very clear expectation that it is just a spinning of the text. And uh, the value is not uh, on this tool is not like about rewriting this, but so maybe when you rewrite, the questions might be different. That's that was the goal. That was the idea of rewrite. And you don't also want to copy as it is it because yeah. the spinning the text is not really making you free from the plagiarism, right? Sure. Uh, again, I what I have not shown is um, you can again uh, select, for example, uh, I wanted to. I'm here. I was already like making my blog for the. Now I have this information, but I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I also don't find very interesting things here. Mm -hmm. I can go and say, write me Athena. This is uh, this is like uh, very important, which uh, uh, is the feature because it writes you the next text by understanding the context behind this text. You see. So I can start developing my blog. The process, so it was the process is usually accomplished by following a computer added design model or other digital input. So it took the context from here and then it further expanded on that. And suppose uh, I don't want to work like this. I'm working on a headline. Suppose here that this was my headline, 3D hmm. printing design pattern. Now I want Athena to help me more with that. So break this point like 3D uh, point sub headline one, headline two, three, four. It can give me more ideas about. So 3D 3D printing design pattern. 3D printing is the newest innovation in the manufacturing. It's a technology that prints object. You see, it can turn a small text also into this, or it can also turn this into a question answer pattern. And if you like, you can also design your own prompt here. So you can say question um, and you can say, I want this answer, right? Answer. And then you can select and you, you, uh, you can ask, write me Athena. So our main idea is not to uh, tell you to design your prompt. Whenever you are there, uh, if you're stuck, you can get some help from Athena to write me Athena. And it's not as equal to completions in a other tools, but what it do when I select this text, it convert into sort of powerful you know, question, and it asks Athena's answer. If Athena has answered, then it use that for the prompt, and then come up with the new answer. So you see, it's not like just um, a playground completion like other or uh, like a GPT three or kind of thing. It use uh, maybe some power there, but it intelligently use the internal AI first to come up with the right uh, insight or right uh, argument from your market research. If okay, I so we should, uh, whatever the text we highlight, it will de develop based on that particular highlighted text, right? Highlighted text, but the context will come from your market research. Sense, sense, sense. Sense. Yeah. Got it. Then um, it's like any other competitor, it will uh, compete or, or any other competitor's content. It will help you to understand headlines, what kind of topics that you must be covering uh, in your blog uh, when you're writing about 3D printing. These are all topics that your competitors are using. Mm -hmm. Questions. Uh, what are the different questions that uh, are coming from, uh, for example, Cura? So these are also questions which are being asked about this topic in Cura, and you can generate answer of these as well. It makes sense. So all the Cura questions, and you generate answers. You can further add in your blog if it makes sense to you. Uh, then it also uh, take reviews from the sites if this is really a specific product. So uh, you see there are several reviews and other things that people are talking about 3D printing. You can also club this information. Again, you will see here that all your market research is also here. So anytime you can refer back to this market research if you are like forgetting anything. And um, what we are trying to do now is really make sure that we have a market research here, which you can see always and refer mm -hmm. and your content and a score to provide you a score that, hey, uh, how much percentage you're close with your original market research. And that will be really powerful because then it will work with other tools as well. You optimize SEO in one tool, you come here, optimize for a market research, or you start first optimizing for market research, go to other tool and optimize for SEO. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, this scroll queue is a perfect companion tool with other tools available in the market as well. Um, 
Do you have more questions for me? Because I, I think I can quickly show one more powerful feature. Uh, this is sales copywriting. So all things that we were talking was only mostly about the um, uh, the blog content, but yeah. it also provides you ability to write headlines, sales letters, nurture email sequences, webinar scripts, landing pages, teaching course outlines, uh, different types of insights. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to go long form content and a sales letter. Uh, there are different types of sales letters. These are from the popular copywriters, Don Kennedy, Ray Edward, Clayton McPeace, uh, mm -hmm. Fred Stone's Benefit. It it helps you in a sort of tool tip to understand why should I use this sales letter, in which situation I should use this sales letter. So if you select one of these, and uh, the way we are trying to implement is you can directly create a document, but in this case, I had already created. So let's say, <clears throat> the printing. My screen is slow. And and uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, at this stage we don't want to have any mistake with the user. So this can be more specific in the context mm -hmm. that you are creating. But since uh, we need to connect Athena with the anything you know everything so this is our sort of connection point correlate mm -hmm. connecting one bridge with the other bridge so once you uh, sort of answer your two three questions here and you will see that a button is activated fill with ai this is i already created this document so that's how for this demo purpose but you will only answer like two three questions and this mm -hmm. script is more than 50 questions so it's same okay. concept. you fill with ai and answers all the questions you will get your sales letter and the same interface like you had with content writer, you will also have the same interface. And this, you can imagine this as a content brief for a sales letter. So this is as good as uh, like 80% to use. It is giving you a structure like our 3D printing, uh, you will, you are mentioning these benefits. Uh, this is perfect sales language or landing page language where you have Already, someone give you a uh, testimonial. How you are going to arrange this testimonial? What people? Should, so this information, for example, I am Chris Pirillo, a craft and design engineer student in the final year. is a creator. This kind of a uh, language you see here is already sort of uh, picked up from your market research, and this mm. sort of a eighty percent ready your landing page, your sales letter, and now you can again use write me Athena or you can create content brief here again, headline intro, you can enrich it. Or if you are really looking for a particular sales letter, then you can change your topic and give it more context, not as a blog, but as a landing page or a sales letter. And again, you will have the sort of content which we can use it here, right? Excellent. So there are uh, several well uh, tested or proven outline which you have created for sales copies whenever you choose one of those outlines or just a, a inspiration it will use whatever the market research it has been already have from you along with uh, ai component to create this yeah here you can use uh, uh, other topics or write more to enrich more content for this section yes i would uh, i would take this as a roughly already pre-filled um, sales letter or a landing page template for me mm -hmm. as good as from the market research it's like a uh, brief for me but not just an empty brief but filled up with uh, uh, like arguments because in any kind of uh, sales letter or um, or a landing page the structure of the information is important right so sure. it gives you some structure of the information how you are going to expand on it and you can again use the same formula to expand on it uh, you can even search for a specific topic, then you will get that specific page. Uh, you don't get Wikipedia page if you type here 3D printing, right? Sure. If you take that specific search term of that blog, then definitely you are going to get a specific content that you are looking for. From here, if when you use keyword, again, you can do generate questions, rewriting, or get inspiration and get it yeah. into the sales copy. Into, indeed, indeed. So here you will not put like a SEO type of keyword 3D, but you will really put a long query. Maybe informational. 
yeah i will you say i want to uh, have a uh, sales letter for my 3d printing website something like that then you will get only sales letter related content also in the context of 3d printing it's just a search right then you get more relevant content which is related to your sales copy and again you can expand on that uh, can you also show one example of the email uh, copies yeah mm -hmm. You have to go back here. Because we had a discussion today in our group. Someone was uh, looking for uh, AI, uh, AI email copy generation. And I didn't actually know that uh, uh, crawl like you had something for that. So just would love to check it out. So here again, main topic is 3D printing. printing. In the first email of this series, you address the problem of your micro niche. So we are going to answer some questions and then it will generate because there are a lot of questions here. So we are not going to answer. AI so what generate. are the templates available for email currently? OK, I can, uh, can show you this template. So you can see here uh, six part content authority. So it's a nurture sequence, like knowledge sequence. Mm -hmm. Then you have five day. Uh, content drip so every day you are sending then it is nine step customer onboarding series then these are some short uh, scripts uh, which are kind of uh, fast teaser emails and subject ideas here you have five day power coach uh, so again five day uh, thread of email that you can start three part cold cold to hot lead magnet conversion so and this is a five day after sale autoresponder you have 12 step outbound authority autoresponder. So it's like 12 step each day you're sending email series. You have funnel testimonial request email, your customer onboarding email, your power like converting emails. These kind of different types of emails are there. You can use in which situation is also here. Okay. And also you will be adding more also into these templates as you grow. Depending yeah, on definitely, that. definitely. That's that's the plan. As we grow more here, we are adding slowly more and more templates, video scripts. Like here you can find some of these video scripts. Uh, you can say short video, hero video. Sometimes you have the website and you have to have a hero video script or mass desire uh, product construction script. So these, um, I think uh, maybe I'm running out of time. I don't know uh, the call, but uh, there are a lot of resources actually. And uh, one yeah. last uh, before we go forward, what is the uh, AI content and summarizer feature? I saw it on the menu. Yeah. So uh, I showed you already rewriter. Uh, yeah. I showed you inside the text. Okay, uh, got can, it. You can put any text here and uh, rewrite that. Uh, let's try. It. It's it's same like you you put here text. Mm. Uh, rewrite and it will uh, put you rewrite. It's good. Got it. Workflows like uh, if you are really into cook and you wanted to, um, you know, change some text or. You but currently, to... it is just a print text. No AI component is here. It's it's more like uh, changing it in the uh, structure, not like uh, using AI or expanding it or you know improving. It. It's not like that. Got it. You will let's do it, and you can see it like how you can have the different ratios means. You can give it uh, one try, second try, third try. Mm -hmm. You can spin it in more different ways. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So this was the original text. It reproduced the text and it brings some power words, like what are the uh, power right. words that are used, emotional words that are used. And I can again switch this number, so slide it here, rewrite. It will rewrite in a different way. Mm -hmm. but okay. The rewrite is not like really in a, expanding or contracting. Now, text summarizer is uh, would be same, but summarizing this information. So you can start with the domain name also. So you can give an HTTPS domain, choose the word length and generate, or you can give a content. So you can also type in content here and then generate uh, the summary of that content.
I think the summary was uh, the content was really short here. Yeah, could be. So we can put any URL and it will bring a summary of that particular blog post. Yes, yes, yes. Summary of the any URL you put here. Any URL. Can you that. put uh, the welcome crawl uh, URL and see what is happening? Oh, it's the uh, it's one of the <laughs> very big content. So depending on the content, it will take processing differently. Indeed, indeed. It's very big content. So ideally for summarizer, you wanted to have some short content and quickly summarize it and use it for your uh, link post or some other thing. Um, talking about the previous sale, actually we had uh, uh, other features. So it was fully loaded with SEO feature, competitor analysis, topic modeling, uh, what we did in this version, we really concise it, make it more powerful, do this USP in terms of market research, uh, which is actually the tool uh, it's most focused on, and then using this information for uh, content creation. Competitor analysis, we already inbuilt inside it uh, in the content creator. You, you have seen different competitors, topic. Topic modeling also we take care already. So those two features are also consumed in those uh, new improvements. Now what we have is an SEO add-on, which is like semantic SEO, and it really take different approach than normal keywords. It also, of course, give you full SEO data about your site, H1 tag, meta description, but it focuses more on the aspects like sentiments, readability, and it gives a different score on those areas. And that's where we are trying to make it like an additional add-on tool on top of it. And we're trying to connect these two things together so that uh, when you do SEO is like buyer persona optimized SEO as well. True. But that's something that we are working. We rapidly change our UI UX into this direction. And that's something uh, is uh, was offered as a part of our first marketplace deal. And it will come back, of course, uh, to the first uh, early adopters as it is. True. But for the new adopters, we have to uh, see how uh, we are going to make it available. Okay, so if I understand correctly, it's just not another content uh, generation using AI, not just a keyword research or ICU tool. Your focus is to create something uh, where you can use this to understand your target audience much better and try to use that insights and generate insights also what you already know and use that inside any content you generate, can be blog post, sales copy, or email generation, and you are already inputting different uh, proven templates of clients and everything, where you use this to create a, a draft. It's not the final piece, but a draft, and use yeah. that and use competitive models to inbuilt, uh, make enriched content a bit more process on that. Is it right. correct? Yes. Okay. And it's especially designed for people who wanted to generate new business idea, who want to validate an existing business mm -hmm. idea. So true, they, true. I will highly encourage uh, people to look for use cases. So we are putting a lot of use cases of different niches and mm -hmm. discovery of this niches, like how to go from one high level to deep level. For mm -hmm. example, this was a uh, specialty food tech. And in this, uh, the niche was a dietary conscious consumer who loves edible insects and enjoy the benefit they bring to their daily life. And it goes further into this. Consumers who are aware that insects have their power to significantly reduce the environmental impact of their food. They require few resources to raise their uh, race and their nutritional qualities are excellent. And it goes into further ideal prospect. My ideal prospect in this case is uh, Jihan. Chanel, she is 26 year old girl from this place in uh, France. Uh, she is struggling to find an organic, traceable, and high quality environmental friendly diet. She desires to have a high quality protein diet full of vitamin B12, minerals, omega 3, and 6 in omega 3 and 6 from alternative sources like edible insects. So you see, it's a new business idea validation hmm. or new idea origination, but really focus on that target audience that Jihan, the girl who is 26 years old and what she wants, what she desires. And then sort of connect this idea to your content and stories. It's so, really good to generate uh, personas for your audience and everything. That helps a lot. And you were mentioning on the earlier stage that like, uh, what uh, what to talk on coffee date i wasn't understanding it fully but now i understand it shows gives you the points which you can take 
and talk to and learn more about the niche so yeah. that is what it's bringing all these things yeah. and we can validate ideas also yeah so in this in this case uh, i was uh, a company uh, i have a snacks bar which are made from protein and one of the mm -hmm. snack bar is also made from uh, uh, insect protein and i am the ceo of this company and i want to have a coffee date with jihan so then if i do this research then i will exactly know uh, what jihan mm -hmm. want but she is a very busy person she is looking for a change in the sort of her diet and yes, she is looking for it right so uh, being as a business owner uh, being as a content developer being as a marketer you wanted to create conversational and talking points so that you can talk on this coffee date true so uh, so now i understand the tool perfectly so what are your initial uh, uh, next future plans for the tools moving forward what are you planning to focus on and just quickly share your vision so we can understand that uh from this step onward we wanted to make our ai super powerful so mm. uh, the context that it picks uh is uh, very highly relevant we wanted to also create some scores where these scores will be able to help you to understand where you mm. stand in your content creation mm. process because you start with a rough idea of your target audience you refine mm. it you create a content we wanted to provide you metrics on this metrics you can evaluate yourself where you are at this stage in mm. uh, your content creation journey are and then our main goal is to collect some data on conversions and some other sources and then also uh, sort of uh, build this information inside it so that on the on the along the way of your uh, refinement you can steer in the right direction if you mm. understand what my vision is to combine the data from google analytics conversion metrics or some other places because it's okay it gives me a good starting point to start uh, a target audience research test it but how to inbuild that feedback that will come from the market and again mm -hmm. use that feedback for the sort of uh, content creation and improvement so this our mm -hmm. sort of plan. and uh, we wanted to have our own uh, it's already we have developed our inside uh, ai athena we call it athena Yeah, and make it more and more powerful so sure. uh, it's it's kind of uh, our only our, our goal is to make sure that the quality of the content is unique uh, hmm. unique and very very specific content um, which is really needed for your product launches for your website yeah i like the idea where you are not just generating the content but trying to put whatever the insights which is you are putting or uh, mm -hmm. just inserting and use that also into this so that's really interesting for me i need to test it out more on my niches i'm not sure how it will going to work for small niches so i will be plan on trying that to see how it works on that sure. and let's quickly go final questions and i also i will leave the link for the deal also they are currently doing the deal so you guys can check it out that and couple of questions first uh, what is the difference uh, between old marketplace deal and the current deal right i think this is very popular question in <laughs> most of the time there is actually no difference between the first code that we have in the marketplace and the current code there was some initial confusion about users we have fixed this so users are same Hmm. only uh, the difference that people see was on the limit that we put now uh, as 10k words limit and earlier it was stated in the deal as 10k but on the 8 march that when we started this deal we had no ai component in it so you see we have developed this tool quite far from 8 march and what we are today and at that time we actually didn't know even how to uh, calculate the we wanted to have some arbitrary limit and this limit was uh, sort of uh, both for the uh, inside generation and also for the sales letter for the content creation. so this was all to get 10k pages and it was monthly recurring limit but now after developing our own ai we got very clear idea that we should not focus on the quantity of the pages but the quality of the content the insights the story mm -hmm. so everything that we process behind is from ranging from 40 to 60 powerful text that we process to train athena to create a smart prompts 
and this we combine together into uh, 10,000 words. So this is not only the word you see, but also words smartly processed to reduce the font size and to really make sure that these processing limits are, you know, because it involves cost. So we make sure that we are in, into the business. We, run, we don't run out of the business. Based on our economic model and the cost benefit calculation, we have to make sure that at least that part of the processing that cost us, we have some component or some leverage there so that we don't run out of business. And uh, this limit we have divided between, uh, so in, initially there was 10K limit on the total, but now this limit is on the insights generation, but like a lot, lot of market research and training, Athena, everything consumed this limit, but we also have document limits. So you can create 20 high quality documents and each document can be at 2,500 words. So now there's an inbuilt mechanism not to press button, create many documents, but to really create very, very important, uh, sort of very high quality document. And this will really help our uh, users to you know, stay to stay focused and create not like uh, random blogs or random content, but really focused content. Okay, so, uh, so in the earlier adapter deal, there was pages. Now it's just content, right? So yes. is there any difference? Like will some, there will be some benefits for the early adapters uh, up to this, or is it just same for all uh, the both deals right now? Uh, if I say about benefit, we never implemented this limits on okay. things so far. So they already got uh, all the benefits that uh, they have. And in future also, I mean, uh, these 10k limits are recurring for everyone so you just re you reset every month mm -hmm. it's not like that uh, whenever you left them like you you are not going to consume them in the month if you're really focusing on sure. the objective uh, that you are deep diving into your target research mm -hmm. now if you're pressing the button button then you anyway you won't get a quality out of cold queue and of course you can blame cold queue but then um, you're wasting uh, resources and also your time because uh, you're just pressing the buttons there, right? And that's sure. nobody, I don't think nobody will do that. Uh, I mean, nobody want to do that because you wanted to produce quality content. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, are we allowed to stack the marketplace deal for more limits? Yes. So the earlier marketplace, they can buy another code and advance to the another plan because the, the first code is same, more or less same. Even it has a less user, so you wanted to go to the higher code. Once you go to higher code, code two, you can easily uh, get more uh, limits and the benefits of that higher code. You can stick. Okay, cool. So we can stack. Uh, how, what is the maximum number of code we can stack? Four, four codes. So two first. You already have first, right? As a marketplace. Yeah. Second, third, fourth. Okay, and correct. That, so, that so. gives access to almost our uh, equal to our enterprise uh, plan that we have done. Okay, uh, those are the questions right now. Obviously, there will be more questions once people see the recorded video. I'll tag you whenever I don't know the answer. Uh, once again, thank you. It has been taking, I just asked you one hour. It has been going almost one and a half hours. Really sorry about that. And thank you so much for the time and showing us around. Do you have any other final words you want to say to audience? Uh, I really want to uh, say very uh, like my special thanks to you for inviting me for this uh, for this call but at the same time i wanted to pass this message through you to our community that i i understand that it's very important to focus on seo and the keywords traffic but most important from my point of view and my message to you is try to focus on the target audience try to give the value to the audience and not blindly follow the rules of the Google because more SEO you do, it's easy for Google bot and for them it's easy to do everything. But let's not forget in this whole process of finding keywords, search volume, the real person that we are that we want to reach. Out. And this is a message that I want to give everyone that through crawl queue, you can really talk to that real person in a way which cannot connects the emotional hook of that person with your product or services. Hmm. And this is much more richer idea than just focusing on the keywords and topics. Makes sense because it's finally comes down to the intent. If we are not sure on, uh, if it 
find the initial data incorrectly does not matter whatever the process we are going to do after that so it's going to be useless for us so make sure that research component is done and that is where uh, software like uh, crawl iq will come into place to get the initial validation and insight and we can move forward from there yes it's a, it's a exactly intent finding idea but you are starting from bottom and up you are finding that person alston and then generalizing and abstracting that person in a statistical significant number so that you can reach out more alston yes and that's the bottom up and when you start as you so top down approach so you start with very high level and you try with true. your funnels and see whether it works or not true, so true. It's two different approaches that uh, thank you so much thank you so much really means a lot and i will monitor you and wishing you good luck on the deal and as well as software and thank you so much for joining us today thank you for uh, having me it's a pleasure to speak with you also uh, and thank you guys for watching i will make sure to uh, check out it later uh, with the fight stream once again thank you take care guys cheers thank you bye bye cheers take care bye